the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, and that is Coach Jason Garrett. Coach, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Michael. How are you? Coach, I, I'm doing great, Coach. I'm sitting in for the great Rich Eisen. I, I, I told him this is right up there with the top of the things that I've ever accomplished in life because Rich is such a great dude, and I appreciate you taking the time to give us a moment, Coach. Yeah, big shoes to fill. Eisen's a legend. Yeah, Eisen is a, my Eisen is a legend. Coach, Coach talk to me about uh, well, well, all that's going on now. How, how, how do you feel about the draft and, and the guys that you got in the draft? I know you got – you were smart enough to go and get two fifth rounders out of the U. Talk to me about all those guys. You know, we feel great about the group. Uh, you know, we haven't had a chance to see them yet. But, you know, you go through so much evaluation of these players, you know, leading up to the draft. And uh, our scouts have been on these guys for over a year. And then we as coaches, once the season is over, we, we start diving into it as well. And you have so many discussions and so many meetings and You talk about what you want the team to be all about, and then you talk about the kind of players you want at each position to make the team be what you want it to be, the identity of the team, all of those things. And so it's a very thoughtful process that we go through. There's a lot of different decisions that you make along the way, and and then you're on the clock. And and ultimately, you know, you you pick certain guys to add to your team. And, you know, we feel great about – You know, those three days, uh, we weren't very active in day one, but, you know, day two and day three, we feel like we got a lot of good players. And, um, you know, it'll be fun to get them in here this weekend. You know, we do our our mini camp two weeks after the draft, kind of let the whole thing breathe a little bit. And then once we get our players in here, we get a chance to to have them for the rest of the offseason. So uh, we'll first get a chance to be around them on Thursday night. We'll spend three days with them this weekend and then integrate them into the into the offseason program. Uh, You know, we started with Tristan Hill. You know, defensive lineman from Central Florida who, you know, we think has a lot of the traits that we want in that three technique, that under tackle. He's big, uh, but more than that, he's quick, he's explosive, he's powerful and very disruptive. And he's a really young player, and, and we feel like we, we put him in, in a really good environment with, with Rod Marinelli and Leon Lett coaching him every day. And yeah, you know, guys like Demarcus Lawrence and Tyrone Crawford showing him the way to do it uh, each and every day. We just feel like he can grow into something that we really like. And, uh, you know, Connor McGovern was someone we took in the third round, and really it was just the quintessential blinking light. Uh, you know, we looked up at our draft board, and he was graded uh, by far the highest on the board. And we just said, hell, let, let's take the best football player here. So felt good about those guys, you know, in day two, and then got a number of players in day three. Like I said, a couple of University of Miami guys. We want to make sure we continue that tradition. Uh, so many great players in this organization came from Miami, and there's something about – those Miami guys. I'm not just telling you this, but there's a competitive spirit to them. Uh, their love of football. So we want to keep injecting that into our team. So excited about those guys and the rest of the crew we got on day three. Coach, and you're listening to Coach Jason Garrett of the Dallas Cowboys here on the Rich Eisen Show. I'm Mike Orvis sitting in for Rich Eisen. Coach, when you when you, when you talk about how uh, how that draft has gone, and, and it kind of reminds me of the days when when we were there, when you were, it just seemed like everybody was we were drafting was really for the backup positions. We drafted so well, and you guys have drafted so well that now it's about supporting the guys that you have on the football field. And and that seems like what it's doing. What, what kind of expectations will that bring to the Dallas Cowboys this season when we basically say we're using the draft just to support the starters we already have now? Well, uh, you know, I, I respectfully disagree with you a little bit about uh, on that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think, I, I think from the outside that can be the perception. But I think as much as anything else, what we're trying to do with every decision we make is to create competition on our football team. Mm-hmm. And, and you can say in May that, boy, you have a starter here and a starter there, and, boy, the offensive line's back, and this guy's going to play here and that guy's going to play there. You know, one of the things you know we've all discovered a long time ago is, is you have to create competition with every decision that you make. And, um, you know, at the outset, certainly the players we've had will have a, a, a distinct advantage. They've been starters. They've been playing a lot. But you want to create competition throughout your team for guys to make the team, guys that have a role in the team, and certainly guys who, who, are, who are one of the 22 starters. And uh, each of these guys we brought in, we're just excited to see. And we're going to put them out there. And we're going to see how they compete with the guys that we already have. And, and hopefully at the end of it, we'll, we'll, we'll pick the best guy to, to, to make our team, the best guy to have a role, and ultimately the best 
guy to start and have a big impact. And uh, we feel like each of these guys at the different levels of the draft can come in and do that. And uh, so we never want to get into a mode of, oh, mm-hmm. okay, we're all set here. Not now we're just drafting backup players. You know, this league changes too much from year to year. You've got to draft players who can contribute, can compete, can challenge the guys who are already there. And I think we, ho- hopefully we're able to do that. That's Coach Jason Gary, head coach for the Dallas Cowboys. Coach, uh, on the Rich Eisen Show, I'm Mike Corbin sitting in for Rich Eisen. Coach, you, you, you also brought in some, some great players. And, and I was doing the show uh, <clears throat> with Marvin Lewis. Uh, and, and one of the things we talked about was, and the free agency show was a guy that you picked up. He said, Marvin Lewis said at the time, he thought the best free agent out there, and if he was out there hunting, he would go hunting for this kid, was Randall Cobb. Talk about how Randall Cobb can help the Dallas Cowboys this season. Well, he's just been such a good player for so long. And, uh, you know, Cole Beasley, you know, p- playing that slot receiver role for us the last few years was very impactful and, and, and just a really, really good football player. And anybody who's followed our team knows that not only make a lot of catches, but he made a lot of catches at important moments. Uh, third down, down in the red zone, always seemed to come up with, with plays that made a difference. And, you know, he had an opportunity to go up to Buffalo, and it was, it was one of those things that it was hard for us to match financially what they were offering him so you know we had to say okay bees is gone now what do we do well, let, let's look at the landscape and you know randall cobb has been someone we've been trying to cover for seven eight years now right. and, uh he had such a big impact on, on what they were doing up in green bay they used him a lot of different ways inside outside they handed him the ball he'd line up in the backfield and so just that versatility we feel like can, can, can have a really positive impact on our offense and uh you know from afar you feel like you know guys uh, and he always struck me as somebody who was just a real pro and uh, you know knew the game understood the game you know play with great poise just seemed like a real uh, professional football player and then we've had a chance to get to know him through the free agency process and then have him here the last couple months he, he's exactly that uh, someone who just goes about the right way every day and has such a positive influence on some of the younger receivers we've had already to see a guy who's had that kind of success how he approaches it each day. Uh, easy to see why he's been so successful throughout his career. That is head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, Coach Jason Garrett here on the Rich Eisen Show. I'm Mike Corbin sitting in for Rich, Rich, Rich Eisen. Now, now, Coach, you, you said, you know, of, of talking about the free agency and the guys that you picked up and, and a great professional. There's another great professional that came back that you picked up, a free agent called Jason Witten. Tell me, how did that process get started of Jason Witten, Witten coming back to the Dallas Cowboys? Well, you, you know, if you've been around Wit, um, you said it. He's the ultimate professional. And, uh, you know, I don't know that I've ever been around a guy who loved it more, uh, who, who uh, embraced every part of the game as much as Jason Witten has. And, and just fortunate to be around him and coach him for a number of years. And uh, he comes into the building every day, and he just can't get enough of it. And uh, he and I had a lot of discussions prior to him taking the Monday night job and, um, you know, some really heartfelt discussions about, you know, where he is and where he wants to go and, and this opportunity they had in front of him. And, you know, I think all throughout that process, I got the sense that it was hard for him to yeah. just leave. He felt like there was still meat on the bone in his career and what he wanted to accomplish. And, uh, and like I said, he just loved it. And uh, I think so many people expressed to him that that's a rare opportunity. It's hard to get a chance to go, you know, be the lead analyst on Monday Night Football. You need to take that. But I think all the while, I think his heart was pulling him here. And so he went through that process. I think if you'd ask him, you know, I think he'd say he had a really good experience. And and over the course of that that last year, I think he probably felt like he was getting better and learning it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, he just listened to his heart about what he wanted to do. And uh, he came back. We had some discussions, you know, after the season. And, uh, you know, you only get a chance to live once, and you want to embrace what what you're passionate about. And there was no doubt in my mind he was passionate about doing this. So I certainly encouraged him for him as someone who was advising him, but also for our football team. I know he'll have a, a really positive impact on us just because of how he goes about things and he's been such a such a significant player for this organization for a long time so excited to have him back he looks great he looks like the same guy and it's so great to have him in the building yeah and i think he will be a great asset now so so you're saying you called him oh he called you 
Oh, I would say that uh, he probably called me. And, you know, we had a chance to be around each other a couple times <laughs> yes. after the end of the season. So, um, you know, it was just something that, that came up. And, again, I think it was on his mind uh, really since – the day he announced his retirement, this idea that, boy, I want to keep playing football. And, again, we're excited to have him back. Coach, I'm talking to head coach Jason Garrett here on the Rich Eisen Show. I'm Mike Orvin sitting in for Rich Eisen. And one more guy I want to ask you about that that I've been thinking a lot about, and I'm sure a lot of people out there are thinking about, is Travis Frederick. How how is he doing? Travis is doing great. And, uh, you know, again, we've been using this word professional a lot. I mean, talk talk about the consummate pro. He's been – you know, from day one with us, he's just gone about things the right way in a very professional manner. And, you know, just one of those guys that you as a coach, you're always yeah. point to and say, hey, do it like number 72 does. And, you know, he, he was challenged by a very um, odd situation last year. And, uh, you, know, you know, typically you're dealing with uh, orthopedic injuries or uh, soft tissue injuries with players. But to have this the, the 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 syndrome that he had to deal with kind of c- come into his life. I mean that that was not an easy situation. And again, I just thought he handled it so beautifully. Um, you know, he wasn't able to play for us, and uh, he embraced a different role. He, he was one of the best leaders we had on our team last year. He was in every meeting, at every walkthrough, just just part of our football team through and through, and and helped so many people out. You know, Joe Looney, who went and played for him, some of the other guys on the offensive line, and and some of the younger guys that were just playing on our team. We had a really young team, and his leadership, you know, made a big difference. And you know, I think he got, I was feeling better and better over the course of the year. Uh, better since the off season has started, and and he's really been completely a part of our off season program. He looks really good. He, he looks like the same guy. We went out on the field for the first time last week. He's taking part in all of that. He's lifting. He's running, and he looks like the old Travis Frederick. And, and again, we're excited to have him back. And that's Coach Jason Garrett of the Dallas Cowboys here on the Rich Eisen Show. I'm Mike Orvin sitting in for Rich. Coach, we had. Uh, Jerry Jones on yesterday, and he talked and rave reviews about Dak Prescott and 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 that how he's all in on Dak Prescott. And and it's so funny because I was with Ezekiel Elliott the other day and and got a chance to talk to him about the fishing trip that, that Dak and and he and and all the offensive linemen had just gone on and and hung out together. Now now we talked to Jerry about what Dak does on the football field, but but how important is it? that Dak's the kind of leader and he does the things he does off the football field, like taking all of those guys on that trip. How much of that plays into the role when you go to Jerry and say, listen, we got to have this guy, you got to do a contract no matter what. How much of all of that plays into it? Well, he's just a fantastic leader. And if you think about his arc as a player with us, you know, we drafted him in the fourth round in, in 16. Uh, with the idea that Tony Romo was going to be our quarterback. And we needed to get a young guy in here to hopefully compete for the backup spot, but also potentially be a guy who, who became our next quarterback. And and you all know what happened. Obviously, Tony got hurt, and Dak was, was pressed into to being our starting quarterback as a rookie, first year out of college. And uh, and he came in and just played so well. And, and, and the remarkable thing to me about all of that was just watching him handle the whole thing. That's not an easy situation to be in. Tony Obvious was a great player for our organization for a number of years to kind of step into his shoes. A lot of veteran players on that team, when you're a rookie quarterback, you step in the huddle. You have all these guys who are very accomplished. How you handle that? You know, we won a lot of games in a row. How do you handle that success? We had some adversity. How do you handle that? And at every turn, he just handled things so beautifully. Uh, he's such a mature guy. He's got a great perspective on life. Uh, he loves football. Football. He loves what he does. He's got this infectious, contagious personality where you know guys just are so willing to follow him. And uh, and the reason is because he kind of connects with them and does everything everybody else is doing, and and just has a very very unique way of of being able to relate to and connect with so many different guys not only on our team, but throughout our organization. So, you know, I think we saw that right from the start. And and that's only continued to grow here the last couple of years. Uh, He's had a lot of success. You know, he's he started 48 regular season games. He's won 32 of them. You know, I think that ranks among the best 
uh, with guys their first year, their first three years out of school. So he's done a lot of really positive things on the field, been very impactful there. But like you said, it's been equally significant off the field. And, uh, you know, he loves the guys on our team, the offensive guys, the defensive guys. Just he loves being around them, the older guys, the younger guys, guys from different parts of the country. He just has a way of connecting with them and developing a relationship, and they all respond really well to him. And, you know, they've been going on these fishing trips the last couple of years, and they have some great pictures and great yeah. stories they come back with. So I just think it's a really positive thing for our team, and he's certainly the leader of it. That voice you hear, that's Dallas Cowboys head coach Jason Garrett here on the Rich Eisen Show. I'm Mike Orvin sitting in for Rich Eisen. Uh, uh, one of the other things Jerry talked about was Kellen Moore, the young offensive coordinator. And he kind of said, in, and what he was sharing was, that he has confidence, all the confidence in the world in Kellen Moore, but he also has, extra, he has a backup confidence in knowing that you're back there to back him up in case things don't, uh, or don't go as well or, or, or he needs some guidance in a tough spot. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, Kellen is one of those guys that that probably since he was in high school, uh, he had a lot of success as a starting quarterback, and and so many people would attribute that success to his understanding of the game. He's just a really bright guy, you know, in life, but also when it comes to football. And and, uh, he goes on to Boise and wins a ton of games there, and then he's been playing a number of years here in the NFL, and that's probably line one. Uh, when anyone describes Kellen, he's just he's a smart football guy. He gets it. He, he he understands the game. And so, you know, we've been around him for a few years now and we understood, you know, that that about him as well. And uh he was a he was a really strong contributor from his role as a backup quarterback to some of the things we were doing. I think he had a really positive impact on Dak when he was a player. And uh when he decided that he wanted to get into coaching, we just felt like it was a good move for him to be our quarterback coach and you know, we understand that we've accelerated him, you know, really, really quickly. Uh, his second year of coaching to be the offensive coordinator, we get that. Uh, I had a little bit of confidence in it because I took a little bit of a similar route. I was a quarterback coach for two years beca- before becoming an offensive coordinator and, and had been in his shoes. And I think the biggest thing I learned there was – uh, you want to put your stamp on it. You want to put your mark on it. You want to, you know, there's so many things that you have inside of you that you want the offense to be. Um, but but learning how to use the, the, the people around you was probably the biggest takeaway from the experience that I had. A lot of veteran coaches on the staff when I came here to Dallas in 07, and, you know, Tony Sperano was here, uh, a great football coach. Wade Wilson was here. You know, a number of other guys, Skip Pete, my brother John was the type ends coach Ray Sherman was the receiver coach a lot of guys who have been around football for a long time and it was a very collaborative effort that we had and I think that's the one thing that I shared with Kellen is we want to put your stamp on this thing but understand the other guys you have in that room have been around for a number of years Sanjay Lau Doug Nussmeyer Gary Brown you know Mark Colombo is a young coach himself but he's been around our system and what we do and 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 some other other experiences as well so a lot of veteran guys around him and I think Kellen's done a great job putting his stamp on it, but also using the resources that he's had. And he's really off to a good start. It's fun to get with our players. It's fun to see him in action. And, uh, you know, we're excited about where our offense is going. That's head coach Jason Garrett of the Dallas Cowboys here on the Rich Eisen Show. I am Mike Orvin sitting in for Rich Eisen. Coach, you got 10 years as the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I, I want to ask you a couple things here. Would you say that this is your best team and your best opportunity to get to a Super Bowl since you've been head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. And does that put any pressure on you to do to, to actually accomplish that and get this team to a Super Bowl? You know, Michael, I've never really looked at it that way, that this team is better than that team or whatever. Cer- certainly when I first became the coach, if you look at the cycle of our uh, of our team, you know, we had to move on from a number of players who had been here for a while, really good players. Uh, and they had gotten a little bit older. They were making some money. So we had to make some hard decisions. We completely revamped our offensive line in year one. We had a lot of new guys playing, young guys playing. And I think – I think as we got into this thing a little bit, the biggest thing we were trying to do was was build this team the right way. And, and if you think about, you know, our first draft pick was Tyron Smith. 
Uh, we also drafted DeMarco Murray in that first draft. So, so guys who really represent what we want our team to be all about. So we've continued to try to do that over the last seven, eight years. And uh, we've been able to build our offensive line. We've been continue to try to build our defensive line and really all throughout our team with the expression that I use is the right kind of guys, guys who are driven, guys who love to play ball, guys who want to be part of a team, willing to sacrifice, all those things that, that we think are so important. Uh, th- those are the kinds of guys who make up championship teams. And, uh, and so we've just continued to try to do that and make really good decisions and build the team the right way and hopefully build a team we're all proud to be a part of. And, uh, you know, we talk about it. If your goals aren't to win the Super Bowl, you're in the wrong business. You should be doing something else. Uh, so that's something we, we absolutely talk about on day one. Uh, but we also talk about, you know, building a championship mentality and going about the right way each and every day uh, to, to be our best so we can be the best. And those are the expressions we use. That, that, that's the approach that we take. So we're, we're very much focused on what we need to do today, Tuesday, May 7th, uh, to, to be our best as coaches and as players. And we'll continue to focus on that. We have high expectations for ourselves in terms of our approach and what we want to accomplish. And that's really where our focus always stays. Well, Coach, I want to wish you best of luck this season. And thanks for taking the time to call in on the Rich Eisen Show and, and give me a moment to talk. Chat, Coach. Absolutely, Michael. You're the best. All right, Coach. Good luck. Okay, take care. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.